Viewers like you make this program possible. Support your local PBS station. Today we are visiting Galicia, and you, I am in the middle of an oyster farm. Seafood is king in this part of Spain, and we are going to visit also Rias Baixas, where they make some of the best white wine that you can find in the world, using the autochthonous grape, Albariño. We are going to be cooking with mussels, with Taylor Bay scallops. We are going to do so many things today. I am Jose Andres, and this is Made in Spain. Galicia is an ancient part of Spain. Long before the Romans, people here made a living from the sea and from the farms. And today, we're gonna cook with the wine from here and some delicious scallops. Let's go. So today, with this wine, we are gonna be cooking a very unique seafood dish from Galicia, tamburiñas. Don't worry, very simple. But we are not gonna start with seafood. We're gonna start with something that is gonna add a new dimension to those scallops, a Spanish jamón serrano. This cured ham that is so sweet, so salty, so buttery at the same time that hmm, I'm sure it's gonna be good. And now, like every time we're gonna be using onions, we need to caramelize the onions. And as soon as the oil is hot, onion in. We need to somehow always cook the onions with music. What I wanna say with this, listen, listen to this. If we don't achieve this sound, the onions are not gonna be good at the end. All right. And always, where is onion in Spanish cooking? Also, has to be garlic. So we're gonna put two or three cloves of garlic to make the onion feel somehow comfortable. They love each other. And I told you that the onion likes the music, right? And if the onion loves music, garlic somehow loves to dance. You cannot smash it because it's dancing. You need to put always a little bit of salt. Salt doesn't like dancing, so it's perfect. Now, we can smash it without a problem. And already we have the garlic puree. When you do it this way, and it's kind of wet, kind of a puree, the garlic never will burn this way. So that's a good tip. Now, right here in the same pan, we are gonna add the jamón serrano and the parsley. Okay, let's finish this dish. Now, uh, como estáis, amigas? Here we have these scallops. And now, we go and we put a little bit of this mix of onion and garlic and parsley and the jamón serrano on top around like this on everyone okay you want to help me <laughs> next time and now an important ingredient a touch of salt and now the secret ingredient the breadcrumbs on top like this A touch of olive oil right on top. Mm. All right. So now, with the broiler on, 
we introduce the scallops. I'm very careful. Don't start talking on the phone because somehow they're going to cook fairly quick. They really smell good. And you know, this dish has everything I told you, the crunchiness because the bread, the saltiness because the ham, obviously also the sweetness of the scallop. Oof, this is good. Man, it's hot. And now you, you place few in the plate like this. We can put, why not, some herbs. And why not, a little bit of fresh thyme right here. And now let's try these tamburinas. Great dish. Scallops with albariño wine. Mm. I mean, I know I cook them, but you know, I, I think they're good. I'm sorry, but they are. Mm. Mm. I'm really getting inspired. And you know, it's very difficult to beat this seafood, but let me take you to Galicia, where I think is no better region in the world for the seafood. Let's go. Siete hora. Siete hora. Siete hora. So Galicia is located in the northwest part of Spain, north of Portugal. And the town you see back there is Cambados, one of many little towns that dedicate themselves to fishing, and especially where we are right now. This is called Arria. Let's say that Arria is a river of seawater that penetrates deep into the land. In these waters, you can find the best seafood. And to show us the best is my friend Laureano Ovinha, a guy that knows seafood like no one. You will see. Oh, macho, que bonito todo, eh? So what we see here are called bateas. And bateas, let's say, they are like uh, floating farms. So take a look at these lines full of oysters. And you see now, they are kind of uh, breathing. If we touch them, probably, they're going to close in a second. Do you see how it close? And these tiny muscles, they are now like seven month old. And you know, they are attached to the ropes by some kind of a tiny, tiny hair. Like uh, it was almost a beard. Every hair attached the muscles one to each other. And that's why they make this very unique kind of um, meeting point for muscles. This is like a like a big fork that somehow it's uh, raking the bottom, very sandy bottom, where the clams are waiting for me down there. And if we're lucky, I'm gonna get as many clams as here my friend next to me. <laughs> oh my God. I think we got the jackpot with this one. Take a look at the size. Oh, those are beautiful. From here, the clams, they go to the auction, a la lonja. Yes, yes, an auction of clams. Can you believe this? Marta me llamó a las seis a la española. And here we are at the Lonja, the auction house for the fish and shellfish. Take a look at what's happening there. They are selling right now one of the clams, the babosa. And you see the price keeps going down, down. One of them, they are gonna press the button, and they are the buyers of the day. 13.55 a kilo. <laughs> Maligno is the buyer today. I think this is one of the most fun ways to buy fish I've ever seen in my life. I don't think can be a better table in any restaurant to enjoy these very unique oysters. And actually with oysters, nothing goes better than this wine I have in my hand. They use a very unique grape called Albariño, around Albariño, and in this town of Cambados, right here in front of me. Every year, it's an entire celebration surrounding these grape and these wines. And I think I'm gonna be taking you to 
a winery where they make with Albariño grape. This is such a unique wine, yes? And here I am in the winery of Pazo de Señorans. And this old building is called a Piorno. Winemaking in this area is an old ancient tradition. Let's go take a look at the grapes. So here I am surrounded by Albariño vines. And those Albariño vines are very unique, especially because take a look in what a way they kind of take care of them. This system is called emparrado and allows the grapes somehow to be protected thanks to the big leaves from the direct sunlight so they don't burn out. And at the same time, the leaves kind of take the energy from the sun, transforming that energy into very nice sugars that will make those grapes very good to the making of white wine. But you know, a grape like Alvariño needs uh, many other good things to happen to her to become a great wine, like these winds. Those winds are coming almost directly from the sea, and somehow they keep the grape at the perfect temperature all year long. And also the soil. We have here a very unique soil of granite that gives a very delicate flavor to this grape. I think we're gonna go home right now we're gonna make a very unique dish with mussels, obviously Galicia style. <laughs> so Galicia has many more wine regions. One that is very, very, very unique is the region of Valdeorras in the province of Orense. This winery was founded in 1987. And believe it or not, the grape that they use in that region, it's called Godelo. It's one of the original grapes of Spain. Somehow was close to extinction. This winery somehow is bringing this grape back. And now you find many other wineries in the region of Valdeorras. Let's cook a mussel dish that is gonna go very well with this wine. You boil the potatoes, and when the potatoes are ready, happens that half of this recipe is finished. <laughs> That's how simple it is, but very, very, very good. So take a look, because now this happens in two minutes. What we do is this. We go and we get, let's say, a big pan like this. And what we are gonna put inside, you can guess what? Again, it's Spanish olive oil. And now the oil is really hot. The mussels go in the pot. Let's go. I love the sound of the mussels in contact with the olive oil. And in this moment, we put an ingredient that is very important, bay leaf, fresh bay leaf. Let's put three, and in this moment, we add a touch of the wine. The only thing we have to do right now is to cover the mussels. And we are gonna count to five. Cinco, cuatro, tres, Dos, uno, this is almost ready. Oh yeah, you see, they are already open. That's the moment we were waiting for. Okay, what we do in this moment is to make sure that the muscles stop cooking. This way we achieve the perfect muscle we were looking for. All right, they open so quick. And now take a look at this sauce. It looks almost like silky. All right, we are gonna even reduce it for the, careful because it goes very quick. And now we go for the potatoes. And now I'm gonna show you how with the same two ingredients, we somehow can achieve two different dishes. You'll see. Let's do the first one. We can get these potatoes and cut them kind of in cylinders like this. Let's say an inch, inch and a half, okay? And we're gonna put them in a beautiful plate like this. Let's do one more potato. All right, and now we're gonna be putting the mussels right on top. Hey, we really cooked them perfectly. And we're gonna be putting one by one on top of these, like this. And let's go for the last one. Take a look at what we do. We get a little bit of the sauce. It's already here reduced, you see? 
Perfect. And now, just to finish this, a bit of the amazing pimenton, like this. I think it looks good enough. And we get some pigs like this. And we have this perfect tapa to surprise anyone. And you saw how simple it was to make, right? And now with the same ingredients, all the way to somehow present them. And actually, this is probably my favorite way. Now, with these potatoes, what we do is we make a very, very quick puree with the help of a fork, as simple as this. Great. And now we get placing on top of this mashed potato, the mussels, like this, until we cover all the potatoes. Put the rest of this sauce on top of the mussels and on top of the potatoes. And on that dish, especially, I love to add a little bit more of the olive oil. All right. And to finish. And now, a couple of touches like this. And look at, we have like this beautiful rain of pimenton on top of the mussels. Wow. And we have the dish finished. Mmm. Man, it looks yummy. All right, let's see how we did with this one. Mmm. The muscles so good. The potatoes, even better, you know. Galicia is a fascinating region. We saw that they have some of the best seafood in the world, right? But also, they have many other things, like for example, very unique cheeses. Let me show you some of them. I mean, Galicia is known for being a very green region and animals like the cows are the ones that benefit the most. So you need to imagine that the milk they're gonna be producing has to be very savory, tasty milk to make good cheese. The milk that they use to make tetilla, especially they will use a kind of cow that we call rubia gallega, or the blonde Galician cow. And with that milk, they will take it, to the factory, they will add the rennet, they will separate the whey from the curd. After, they will make sure that the curd, it releases the excess of water, and they will press it to make sure that almost no water is left inside. They will add this kind of a thin layer of salt in the outside to make the very traditional yellow color that is gonna be protecting the cheese. The tilla cheese is a serious thing in Galicia. And take a look inside. Yeah. You're gonna see this kind of white and yellow color. Cortamos en triángulo. Es nuestra, nuestra manera tradicional. Vamos. And you see, inside has this creamy texture, white, slightly ivory. Mm. You know, in Galicia, obviously, they make great cheese, but also, they make very good traditional Spanish omelette, tortilla española. I'm gonna take you as soon as I finish this to La Coruña. Many people come to La Coruña to see the Tower of Hercules. This is a lighthouse built by the Romans almost 2,000 years ago. This town was so important then that Julius Caesar himself came here to visit. Today, no visitor can leave La Coruña without tasting tortilla de patatas. So what it is tortilla de patata? Well, I can tell you that tortilla de patata is what we call in English a Spanish omelette. Two ingredients, potatoes and eggs, that somehow make a very humble dish into a sublime one. And here, I'm taking you to probably the Rolls Royce of tortilla de patata, el manjar. Let's go inside to see how it's done. Jose Manuel. 
Hola. ¿Cómo estás? Bien, por aquí. ¿Qué tal? Vengo a que me hagas una tortilla de patata de esa extraordinaria. Pues vamos a intentarlo, hacerla. Vamos a ello. He's gonna do the tortilla for all of us. You'll see what a unique thing. ¿Y está aquí tu madre? Qué bonito es el amor. ¿Cómo estamos? Doña Josefa. Un besote. Gracias. This is astonishing because she's the mother of my friend, the chef. You know, this is a fourth generation recipe of tortilla de patata. And here you see her doing the most important part, cutting these potatoes that grow very close from here, La Coruña, into this kind of uh, tiny pieces, maybe two millimeters thick. You see, this is a step number one in a successful tortilla de patata. So you see, he's putting them in water because he wants to take the starch out. It's very important to clear them of all the starch. Y las vamos a freír, ¿no? Everything is golden about the tortilla. It's golden, the olive oil, the potatoes are gonna be fried until they are golden, hasta que están doradas. Doradas, están crujientes. The eggs are gonna be golden, and the tortilla is gonna have this beautiful color dorado, a golden color. Mmm. And now is the most important moment. Now when the potatoes are hot, he introduces them into these whipped eggs. And now is the moment. As he puts the eggs, you're gonna see that they start coagulating kind of instantly. This one moment, the omelette is gonna be completely separated from the pan. He puts a cover. Y le das la vuelta, sí. No te quema. And he does one turn. The excess of oil goes out. And also some of the excess of egg. And take a look at this yellow color. It's astonishing. It's like a liquid crab of two simple ingredients. And now he makes like a hole right in the middle, you see? And this excess egg is putting it back in again. So it's an omelette with a liquid center. Omelette is finished. <laughs> I know you are thinking, I wish I was there. Don't worry. I'm gonna eat it on my behalf and on yours. <laughs> That's not even that Ha! You see this? Oh my God, this is like a water pillow, but with eggs and potatoes. Eres un genio. You are a genius. Oh! Can we eat it now? ¿La comemos? A comerla. This is the moment. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Take a look at this. And take a look at how liquid it is. It's like the omelette is crying, but crying of happiness. Oh, the same egg yolk becomes a sauce. Oh, in your honor. <laughs> and in yours. In tu honor y en el suyo. My God, why I wait so long to come to El Manjar to eat this omelette for ti. I am Jose Andres and this was Made in Spain. Número, número uno, pa' que el primero, pa' que con estar es suficiente para mí. Uno más, que no uno menos, sumando, sembrando, pensando en lo que voy a hacer. Uno más, pero con nombre y apellidos, tirando de la cuerda siempre hacia adelante. Ay, 